we have a definite integral from 0 to half pi log of a squared sine squared plus b squared cosine squared dx, where a and b are both positive. So this is in fact a function in terms of b, denoted as i of b. Where b as an input will perhaps change the value of the output, right? The output is the integral. So first we will calculate the derivative in terms of b. i prime of b. In fact, we can change the order of the differentiation integration. We can first differentiate inside, then we will do the integration. So, 0 to half pi. Log, according to the chain rule, first we will take its reciprocal of inside log. Right? So we have a squared sine squared plus b squared cosine squared. And we use the chain rule. This time we will differentiate with, with respect inside, right? B as the unknown. So this is a constant, it's gone. And here we have cosine also as a constant. So we have 2B times cosine squared x dx. And this time we will just divide everything by cosine squared, top and bottom. So this is in fact equal to 2b. 2b is taken out, right? Because this integration with respect to x, so 2b can be extracted out. 2b integral from 0 to half pi. This time we have dx and we have cosine square divide sine square, tangent square. So a square tangent square of x plus b squared. And of course, we will let tangent x equal to t this time. Right, tangent x equal to t. x is arc tangent t. dx is now 1 over t square dt, right? Also change the boundaries. When x is equal to 0, t is equal to 0. When x is equal to half pi, t is equal to positive infinity, right? So this time, the derivative of i, b is, is 2b times from 0 to positive infinity this time. dt times arc tangent. So we have dt on the top. On the bottom, we have a squared t squared plus b squared quantity times 1 plus t squared. So now all we have to do is just work out the, can we split up the functional fraction, right? This function in terms of t. So it is a rational function, right? Maybe split them up. So that is equal to 2b from zero to positive infinity, right? And we're gonna determine the constant later. We're gonna, we're gonna say that this is perhaps equal to just a squared t squared plus b squared some constant. Maybe let's try one, or let's guesstimate. And minus, right, perhaps it's, it's minus. It's an educated guess. So still one plus t squared at the bottom. Maybe let's say, let's guess, could be one. Could it be one? Right? So let's a common, common denominator, right? The product of those two, right? Then we multiply one by one plus t squared. Then we multiply this one also by this quantity. So what do we have? We have, this time we have one plus t squared, we have minus 
minus a squared t squared minus b squared. If we want to cancel out the minus a squared t squared, we have to make this t squared into a squared t squared. So perhaps I can um, I can use a squared in here. I can say that's probably a squared. Right now, this time I can just say okay, a squared multiplied by this thing. Right, a squared plus a squared t squared, then minus a squared t squared. Now a squared t squared is cancelled out, and still I have minus b squared. Right, so in the end I have on the top I have a squared minus b squared. Not exactly one. How do I make it one? Multiply by its reciprocal. Right, so this time I can just write two b. On top, right? Divided by the root. Divided by a square minus b square. That's how we cancel out the a square minus b square to make it one. Of course, here we cannot allow allow this to be zero. In other words, we must require b not equal to a. B not equal to A. Right, so this time we can just work out each individual integral. And this time I of I prime B is equal to 2B over A squared minus B squared quantity integral from 0 to positive infinity a squared, if I just divide everything by a squared no, I divide top and bottom by b squared b squared so I should have a squared over b squared that's how I cancel out b squared right? plus 1 and a squared over b squared a over b times t quantity square. A over b times t quantity square. I am treating it as a whole unit. Then we have to, this one is simple. This one is just minus integral from zero to positive infinity of dt one plus t square. Okay, so now this time, this time this in this this integral is easy, right? It just take just extract constant. Then we have one over this whole unit arc tangent of this thing, and we multiply by some constant to cancel out the uh, a over a over b. So it'll be very easy. So equal to 2b over a squared minus b squared. This time, ex extract, take out the constant a squared over b squared. And th there is our cotangent term. Our cotangent, our cotangent a over b times t multiplied by some constant to cancel out the a over b, so multiply by b over a. Multiply by b over a. Arc tangent of this thing, evaluated from zero to positive infinity. That would be just two pi, right? We have minus this thing. What is this? Arc tangent t from zero to positive half pi. This is half pi. All right, just quickly. And this time we can just cancel out the majority of the. So a and a squared, b and b squared, right? They can just simplify down to just a over b. Right? And what else? Two 
pi over 2, pi over 2, right? Common denominator 2, 2 and 2, they just cancel out. Right? They just cancel out. Right? I just have pi. Still, pi is a common factor here. Right? So, common factor. Common factor taken out. I still have b. a squared minus b squared. After taking out the pi, what do I have here? a over b minus 1. A common denominator, b. Still a minus b. Right, this no, a over b minus 1. Right, b over b. Common denominator b, and b and b they just cancel out. What do I have? A minus b, a minus a plus b, pi over a plus b. So this is in fact the value of the derivative of i of b, right? i of b, it's derivative. So what's the original, what's the antiderivative? So that should tell me that antiderivative is, what's the antiderivative? b is the unknown, remember? So that is pi is the constant pi times log of a plus b, right? right? a and b both positive, so I don't need the absolute value. So this is already positive. So we're safe, we're safe. So plus c, right, we're gonna determine the c. Okay, now we reached the expression of i of b. And of course here we do not, uh, here we require b does not equal to a. Now what if what if b is equal to a, right? Could it be still be the same expression? So because the reason is because this function, this function in terms of b is continuous. Right? So meaning the uh, the limit as b approaches a, the limit should be equal to the uh, functional value at a. Right? So in other words, the limit should be should be pi times log of 2a, right? So in other words, it's still the same value as the functional value at a. So in fact, even if b is equal to a, still we have the same expression. So we're, we're safe in this case. So, so we can just simply let b equal to a and find out what i of a is equal to. Go to pi times log of 2a plus c. Right, we're going to determine the value of c. So also i of a is equal to, like I said, this integral is denoted as i of b, or right? b as the input, the output will be the value of the integral. So if we change the input into a, i of a, so we have, right, b becomes a, we have a, a squared. A squared common factor, right? We have sine squared plus cosine squared, that is one. So we have log of, so in fact, we have integral from zero to half pi, log of just A squared dx, basically just the constant, right? So in other words, constant times the half pi, right, half pi log a square square taken down right two two and two cancel out right in the end we should have pi times log a and that is equal to this expression so what what is this this is in fact equal to pi times Log of 2a. Log of 2a is equal to log 2 plus log a, right? Log 2 plus log a distributed pi, right? 
And here we have, so this is equal to that. So what is C? Right. Pi log A, pi log A, they just cancel out. Right. So in fact, this plus C is equal to zero. So C is equal to just minus of pi log two. Right. So what is I of B? I of B is equal to pi times pi uh, taken out log of a plus b minus log of 2. We have log of a plus b over 2. So the reason we are able to switch the order of differentiation and integration, it's legal because I've shown in a previous video that as long as the this function is continuous. All right, this, what is this function? This function is a result of the partial derivative with respect to b. And this is also a function of double variable b and x. Right? It's easy for us to show that it is continuous. Now, over any rectangle, alpha, beta, c, d, right? 0 less than alpha, alpha less than b, 0 less than c, c less than d. Right, b ranging from alpha to beta, x ranging from c to d. Right, easy, easy for us to verify that this function, double variable function, is continuous everywhere at any point inside this rectangle. Right? Therefore, it's uh, legal.